Yeah. So this this is showing a bigger picture. So what is that? Is it live on YouTube too? So what, where, where am I? Where am I? You're not on yet. I, I just, the camera's not on yet. I'm just getting the time right now. They stiff stuff to this in. Yeah, they need to see that, sure. But I'm on the So this is in a minute. I'm gonna have to press that too. I didn't hear anybody else come out on there. Neither did I. Mm -hmm. They mean they're probably trying to get on now. That's what I'm saying. So. Georgia? Yes? You anybody else come aboard? I haven't heard anybody else come in. All right. Okay. See your mother just came in. Who is that? Michelle Ray Stanfield. Who? Ray Stanfield. Ray Stanfield? Okay. <laughs> he said he remembered a choir stand, a choir coming from the game, so he must must be Stanfield. And that'll be it. You ready? Am I live now, sir? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Pray everybody's doing okay out there. Uh, the uh, you may have to mute your phone. But we are here this morning at Great Hope Baptist Church here in the city of Buffalo, New York. Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there listening, pray all is well with you. Um, been a kind of a tough week for us. Um, things are still slow here in New York. The uh, governor is uh, talking about keeping us closed down to about June. I don't think he knows I have an anniversary or what's going on. And, uh, but churches across the country, uh, we're all in the same position. Um, some are opening up today at uh, half capacity. So we wanna pray for uh, churches across the country and we wanna pray for each other. Uh, we need to realize that uh, it is important for us to be together. So once we get that kind of freedom to do so. We want to encourage each one to get ready, to come back to church. And you can uh, wear your mask, you know, and we may have to wear our mask. We won't be able to shake hands and hug and kiss. So we'll just have to make our way through this season for a while until there's uh, some uh, help for this virus, either a vaccine or, or people know if they go in the hospital,
likelihood is they'll come out. And I think that'll make a difference for all of us. Uh, we're going to uh, be continuing. Uh, we've been talking about the pastor for the last uh, uh, three weeks. This is week three. And we want to encourage you to uh, take part from John chapter 21. And we're beginning around uh, verse 15. Verse 15 in John chapter chapter 21. A lot of confusion in the land about churches, about pastors, about the Bible. And uh, some people say, I don't believe the Bible. Uh, I say they haven't read the Bible. Some people say the church is not necessary. I say they have not become a part of the church. If they become a part of the church, the church fellowship, they'll find out that the church is very much necessary and important a part of their lives. I wouldn't be where I am if it were not for the church. I've been blessed that from a child. I've had contact with the church. My grandfather was a preacher and, and early on, uh, uh, my Aunt Frances taken me to uh, uh, Michigan Avenue Baptist Church, and then Brother and Sister Staples taking me over to Pilgrim Baptist Church, and then Helen Dillon and uh, taking our family to uh, then St. Mark, and then which became Jonas Chapel, and then on to New Zion. So I've been a part of the church, and but my conviction and conversion came in 1969 at the New Zion Baptist Church when I first met my pastor, the Reverend S.W. Williams, Jr. And I thank God for him. He's gone on to be with the Lord and grateful for uh, my home church and for sure my family. I wish my wife a happy Mother's Day and other mothers in our church and across the land. And my heart is heavy with those who this Mother's Day is different than Mother's Day last year. The mother's gone on. My heart is so heavy for you. And uh, I want you to know that, that God is in uh, the blessing business. And he knows how to comfort us in these time of struggles and, and storms in our life. You thank the Lord for the time you had your mother. Thank God for the mother that God gave you. And Shirley Caesar said, I remember mama in a special way. And I think that's what you ought to do. You ought to remember your mother in a special way. John chapter 21 and uh, verse 15. John chapter 21, verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Verse 16, he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Today I want to talk about the pastor's method. The pastor's method. We started off this journey by talking about the pastor's making. The pastor's making. The making of the pastor involves our Father, Heavenly Father, Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We're Trinitarians. We believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, they're active in the making of the pastor. In Matthew 16, 
Jesus asked them, said, whom, whom do men say that I am? And he said, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, the one of the prophets. But then Jesus said, but whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. So the father was involved by revealing to Peter who Jesus is. And then Jesus said, uh, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And so Jesus is instrumental in making the pastor because he gives us the keys. And then the Bible says in Acts 20 and 28 that the Holy Spirit has made the pastor overseer. The pastor is an overseer. As overseer, that means I'm a bishop. I said to you before, I'm a bishop. It looks like Bishop Blackburn. I can put it out there now, Bishop Blackburn. I was made a bishop by the Holy Spirit when he made me pastor of the Greater Hope Baptist Church. And I want you to know that uh, uh, that's the way that we believe, I believe. And um, I got fellow brothers in, in the city uh, that made pastor of their church. My cousin, Pastor Banks, is celebrated his 39th anniversary at Faith. He's Bishop Banks, Elder Banks, Pastor Banks, Shepherd Banks, Pastor Gillison, Bishop Gillison, Elder Gillison. We, 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 we are bishops because we've been made overseer of the congregation. That's the pastor's math, method, pastor's math, pastor's making. The Holy Spirit moves upon the congregation to call the pastor. None of us, none of us, Pastor Banks didn't break in the faith. I didn't break in the greater hope. Pastor John Williams didn't break in the New Zion Memorial. People were moved by the Holy Spirit to call the pastor. We are called, chosen, and, and through, the, through the people, we are a congregational form of government. The people act. And they call a pastor. And then the calling of that pastor, the making of that pastor, that pastor's called to give leadership to make a difference in that local church. But then the pastor's motive, the pastor's motive, people are all confused. They think the pastor's in it for money. I don't know, they think these churches are so rich. My heart today, right now, is going out to pastors who may be having a difficult time right now. And the we can make a difference in the pastor's life and uh, by, by uh, uh, many means we want to be a blessing. We want to be a blessing. But the Lord, the Lord said, Peter, do you love me? Peter's motive is not money. Money is not the driving motive for a pastor in this work. Neither is, neither is his motive members. The people have so many, all the members they have, but probably every church is like Greater Hope. I have members that I would long to see that would be here in the pew here at the church if church was open. But now that we're not able to open, uh, I don't have contact with them. And I wish that some every member would call members to let them know that their church is concerned about them and that they are. So it's not members, not members. You could have 40,000 members. Members is not the motive. Any pastor that's out to get members, he's, he's Mr. Mark. Out to get money, he's Mr. Mark. The motive for the pastor is love. Jesus said, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. That's the motive. That's the motive. Do you love me? You know I love you. That's the motive. That's the driving force. That's the force. Love for the master. You now, people think you can just walk away from this business. Just can't walk away from it. Jesus said, do you love me? Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? And Peter was grieved that Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? 
And the Bible says, Jesus said, if you love me, then I want you to do something. And that's where we're at today, the pastor's method. What is the method for the pastor? He said, he said, he said, if you love me, Peter, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed, 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 feed. The, pastor, the, the pastor's method is to feed the lambs, feed the sheep, feed the sheep, feed. The pastor's method is not to fuss with the sheep. So many people want, want to get a, in a fussing movement. The Lord didn't send me here to fuss with the sheep, fuss with the lambs, fuss with the sheep. The pastor's method is not to fuss. And any pastor who's fussing needs to take another look. I don't, don't, don't no fussing. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Moses and Aaron and the wilderness. But not fuss. Not fuss. Not fuss. Fussing doesn't help. Some people just want to fuss. Some people, sometimes you got members that they just want to fuss. They want to fuss. Can we, can we have a fussing meeting? And no, 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 I'm so, I'm so grateful. I thank the Lord that the Lord uh, helps me to catch myself and struggle through. When things are not going, things are not going right, then fussing is not going to help them. You can't, you can't fuss the people into a better church. You can't fuss them into being a time. I can't get them I fuss, I wish I want to fuss, I fuss, fuss. I can't fuss nobody even into being better. The husband and wives tear up their homes, fussing at each other. You fussing at your husband because he won't pick up the socks. He's fussing at you because you won't cook the dinner. Fussing, fussing ain't gonna make no. All it's gonna keep is a lot of confusion in the house. After a while, he's gonna say, "I'm getting out of here. I don't want to be around here. I don't. I don't want to be in no fussing house." After a while, she said, "I'm tired of being fussed at. Every time you come home, you're just fussing at me. I'm tired of being fussed at." Nobody wants to be in a fussing situation. And for sure, Jesus didn't want, he didn't want the church to be in a fussing situation. Pastors are not to fuss. You don't, you don't, you don't fuss with your children. How do you fuss with the children? Fussing, fussing, fussing is not the plan. The pastor's method is not to fuss. Pastor, if you're fussing, members, if you're fussing, if, 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 if you're head of an auxiliary or something and you're fussing at your members, you're fussing at, you're fussing at the people that make up your auxiliary, then that's not the way. That's not the way. Fussing is not going different. And I listen, I say it at greater hope. I don't want you fussing at these people. I tell them, don't be fussing at them. Don't be fussing at them. Don't be fussing at them. Get a grip on it. Get a grip on it. I wish you would. All of us wish we would. We, we wish we would. We, we wish we would do better. We wish we would. Mothers, they wish their children would call them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But fussing, fussing is not the pastor's method. Neither fighting, not, not fighting. The pastor, the pastor not called a fight, fighting with the members. We just have, we, come on, come on and fight. Oh, Lord, I mentioned some people want to fight. I tell Pastor, you got to be careful. Stay out of these meetings. Some people want to fight. That's, oh, when, they, when you, you talk about you have a fight, oh, they're ready to go to the meeting. Then let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready for them. I'm ready for them. Listen, I'm in, I'm, I, I am in year 37. I've completed 36 years at Greater Oak. I've done all I could for 36, 30 years is to avoid fights in the church. A fight. Lord, have mercy. Me against the, me against the member, the member against me. Lord have mercy. Fighting. Jesus, Jesus said, Peter, if you love me, if you love me, don't fuss, don't fight. Don't fuss, don't fight. Lord have mercy. You want to turn your house around? Stop, stop, stop all this fussing and fighting. Stop all this fussing and fighting. We're fussing and fighting about it. Jesus said, Jesus said, Peter, Peter, that's not, that's not the method. That's not the motive. The motive is not money, not, not, not members. 
The method is not fussing, not fighting. Listen, listen, you might... What, why are you going to have a fighting meeting, a fussing meeting? Why, why, why call the church together to have a meeting? And 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 so I tell pastors, listen, if you if you think they're going to say no, don't even ask them. Don't even ask them. You look like asking them to do something, and they, now you know you've got a fussing, fighting meeting. You leave, you lead in everything. Don't. Allow yourself to get caught up in fussing and fighting. You say, this meeting is over. Well, we want to fuss and fight some more. <laughs> You're not fussing and fighting with me. It's over with. I didn't come out here to fuss and fight with you. Lord have mercy. You need, to, you need to mute your phone. If you're out there, you need to mute your phone. It's important. It's important for us to understand that if we if we're going to if we're going to be the church that the Lord would have us to be, if we're going to be the church the Lord would have us to be. Then we're going to have to cut out all this fussing and fighting. Same in some of these churches. One every week they have one meet every month they're having a meeting. Every week the deacons and trustees are meeting. Fussing and fighting. Fussing. Fussing over what? Some of them, some of them fuss and fight at the church because they can't fuss at home. They henpecked at home. They can't fuss at home. They don't come to church and want to fight with the deacon, fuss with the pastor. Members want to fuss. We look like fussing and fighting with, with some member's wife, some member's mother. Those are all losing situations. The pastor's method is not to fuss, not to fight. And please don't, 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 don't put the pastor in that kind of position. Don't put, don't put the pastor in a position where he's got to, well, I got to go meet with you now. We're going to be fussing over what color the wall is, what color, what color the pew going to be, what, whether we're going to buy the land or not, what we're going to do. He's going to fuss over it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Sometimes you, you win the battle, but you lose the war. You lose, win the battle, but you lose the war. Lord have mercy. People leave churches because they don't want to be, I'm tired of fighting. I want to go somewhere where I don't have to fight. I'm sick of all this fussing. I, Pastor, I won't be, Pastor, I won't be back at no more meetings because it drives my blood pressure up, they tell you. I don't want to be a part of it. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, if you just give leadership, the Bible says, the Bible says that they had a pillar of fire and a cloud. Cloud by day, fire by night. And they didn't move until the, if the cloud moved, they moved. The Bible said whether it was a day or a month or a year, when God moved, that's when they moved. Brother Sarah, Brother Sarah Parham, gone on to be with the Lord, died in 1976. I hear Mother Parham saying, when the Lord get ready, you got to move. Cut out all this fussing and fighting. Please, 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 please. It ain't worth it. It's not worth it. It's not our method. Our method is not to fuss, not to fight. The method is to feed. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Feed them. Feed them. Feed them. That's what this is all about. That's why. That's why. That's why we're on on YouTube this morning. Why we're on Facebook this morning. Why we're on conference call. Why I'm here. The reason why because my job is to feed. My job is to feed. Oh Lord, have mercy. My secretary gone on to be with the Lord, Rosden. Roslyn Tool Carwell. Roslyn was newborn in the church and, and uh, uh, baptized her. Amazing woman. Going on to be with the Lord. Amazing, an amazing woman. I'm where I'm sitting right now, the tie box would, would, would be right here. And we, 
taught tithe. I was taught to tithe, so I feed them. I, I, listen, I, I feed them. You feed God. How you get people to tithe? You feed them. You feed them Malachi 3 and 10. You feed them Leviticus 27. You feed them Genesis 14. You, you feed them Genesis 28. You feed them. You feed them the word of God. You feed them Matthew 23. You feed people the word of God. Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Jesus said, you, you ought to tithe. You feed them. You don't fuss. I wish y'all would tie. No, 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 no. The fuss let them not. That, oh, you, listen, fuss, that's not going to do it. They have to be fed. You have to feed them. You have to feed them. Now, I fed, I fed Roz. I fed Roz the word of God. Roz said, Pastor, she had lost her, her job at, the, at the, uh, they had cut back. She said, I don't have no, I said, Roz, just, just put, you, just get in the tide line. 10% of nothing is, 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 is nothing. And Roz would, Roz would pick that envelope out and Roz would put a zero on that envelope and drop it in the tide box. Oh, Lord have mercy. And when God started giving Roz a job, Roz paid her tithes. And when Roz died, Roz and Caldwell, people don't like to hear me say it. People don't like to hear me say it. I've been pastor for 36 years. There's pastors out there right now will tell you how many, how many members have left money to the church when they died and left money to the pastor when they died and looked out for others when they died. Roz and Caldwell was that that person. I've been here 36 years, and the truth is the life. And people die and don't, don't leave anything to the church. They want the pastor, want everybody to feed their family, want everybody to do all kinds of things, want the pastor to do everything. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't charge for funerals. I don't charge for weddings. We don't charge at Greater Oak. I don't charge. We don't, we don't charge. 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 But you're supposed to, you, you ought to do something. You ought to do something. It's important. It's important to do. So you feed them, you feed them, you feed them, you feed, you feed, you feed, you feed people. Whatever you, whatever, whatever it is that you want, feed them. They're lambs, they're sheep, feed them. Feed my lambs, feed, feed. Jesus said, my, my method is for you to feed them. And Roz, Roz said, Roz was hungry. Roz, and so I, had, I started feeding for the, from the pastor. I started putting a sheet in the bulletin every week, feedings from the pastor. What I miss right now about this here is that every week at Greater Hope, the members would get a responsive reading. I mean, they would get scripture, a whole page of it. They would get my sermon, the outline, and everything. They would get that every week. And, and I, I, I knew when I was doing that that I, I was robbing myself of being an orator. I was robbing myself of the suspense and everything. But they are the members of Greater Hope. They're my members. They're Greater Hope. And they belong to the Lord. The Lord said, you ought to feed them. And, and listen, it's not going to happen. It's not just going to happen if people don't have the word of God in their hands. My good friend, Pastor Gillison, when he, I don't know if he does it today, probably not with the numbers that he has. I don't know. Hopefully he does. But, but, but when he, everybody, everybody got, he got them all, and they all had an open Bible. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Every week, a greater, our, our expense, our biggest expense is the copying machine and buying paper and the second, all of that there is cause it's all a part of feeding the Lord's children. Brother Reverend Sam aboard because it's about feeding the people, feeding people, a robocall with just the word of God and a prayer. Wednesday night Bible class, Tuesday Bible class, Saturday morning prayer. Feed, 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 feed. Whatever it is you want. If you want a stronger auxiliary, a stronger group, then feed them. Feed them. Don't fuss. Don't fuss. 
Pastor, don't fuss, Pastor. Pastor, please don't fuss. But I, I, if you need some tithing, if the people are not tithing now, it, then you need to start feeding them right now. Listen, just feed right now. Don't worry about it. Some people, they don't like it. Listen, listen, mama, listen, I come from a, I'm the oldest of 12. My goodness, you think, you think I set the menu at home? And you know, you in the, they, they know when they were home, they didn't set no menu. Mama put it on the table. It's greens. I don't like greens. Said, I can't help you today. It's greens. It's greens. And greens today and beans tomorrow. Pinto beans. Great northern white beans. Beans. Beans, beans, good for the heart. My man asked us about what do we want? What do you look like? You asked, what do y'all want? What do y'all want me to preach to you? Pastor, will you give me some more candy? Tell me in the morning everything going to be all right. Tell God I got a blessing for you. God got a blessing for you. God, today is your day for a miracle. No, today is your day to hear what thus said the Lord. And that will bring miracles in your life. God said he will open windows of heaven, pour you out blessings. You will not have room enough to reach it. you talking about, I'm not waiting for no, I'm not, I ain't looking for no miracle. I'm looking for the blessing of the Lord because God said that if I do what he tells me to do, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And right there, all these miracles, all this will be added unto you. Take no thought for your life. What you going to wear? What you going to put on? Your heavenly father already know what you're going to do. No good thing with God was hoping them to walk up right in the Lord God is starting to shift. Feed my lamb. Feed, 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 feed. Just feed, Pastor. Just feed. Give out material. Give out material. Give out material. Just feed. Put it in the mail. Put it on the air. Just, just feed them. They don't want to hear the robocall. Let them hang up. That's on them. My job is to feed. I ain't got nothing to do. I don't have nothing to do but whether or not you're going to accept it or not. That's it. And listen, listen, and listen, listen. It's tough sometimes. It's tough for me. As the pastor, it's tough for me. Because sometimes the food I've been charged to give, I said, Lord have mercy, I sure would like to give something better today. I, I Listen, listen. I'd like to give something better today. I sure would like to give something better today. But this is it. The Holy Spirit said, Holy Spirit said this is what you're feeding. And sometimes, you know what I find out? That I fed it. Then I talked to Pastor Lee. He fed it. I talked to Pastor Bai. He fed it. I find out that all of, some of, all of us are feeding the same food today. Because the Holy Spirit knows, because the Holy Spirit is in control of the church. I haven't spent no time telling people how to talk in tongues. And I haven't teach people how to get a miracle. I don't, no, no, no. I'm going to teach you the word of God. I'm going to feed you the word of God. And I thank God for it. I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation over and over and over and over again. Now, I'm in Deuteronomy now, and next time I talk to you, I'll be in Joshua, maybe Judges. God is in control. God is running things. He said, Jesus said, if you love me, Peter, that's the motive. Then I want you to feed my lambs, feed my sheep. That's what I want you to do. I want you to feed. Jesse Bottom said, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Bottom said, I feed, you swallow. I put the food out there, and your job is to swallow it. Mama, mama didn't care nothing about <laughs> Listen, I came from a family of 12. I'm the oldest. You ain't got to worry about it. If you didn't eat, if you didn't eat when dinner time was, if you came back two, three hours later, it wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing. It was gone. Them greens look awfully good later on at night. <laughs> them beans, you be scraping the pot for them beans. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Tell me, I don't like pork. Don't, be, don't eat pork now because you got a little extra money. A pork, chicken, with a fat back, no back. <laughs> Feed. 
And the Bible says the whole Bible is good for feeding. I thank God for Greater Hope Baptist Church. I thank God for my wife and family. I thank God for the, for the members of Greater Hope Baptist Church, the people who have, who have eaten the food. Eat the food. Jesus knows that's how you... That's how you that's how you make disciples. That's how that's how people grow. That's how they develop. You gotta feed them. You gotta tell them. I commanded a widow woman to sustain thee, but you're gonna have to tell her. You're gonna have to feed her what I've given to you. It can make a difference in your life. You want, to, you, 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 you want to have a stronger marriage? Feed. Feed. Yeah, Pastor, but she won't eat. He won't eat. Well, set the table. You just set the table, that's all. So you, take a, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Somebody said you can give them enough salt and after a while they'll drink. Your job is just to, just to, just to feed. The Bible said the husband can be won over by the lifestyle of the wife. And the Bible says that the wife can be purified by the love of the husband. The Bible says just feed. You know, people, have my friend John Williams, <laughs> my friend John Williams, they talk about John Williams, they talk about it. But I believe my friend John Williams could pastor four churches. Five, you know why? Because John Williams going to do one thing. He's just going to feed. You don't care nothing about what y'all talking about. Feed him in the morning, feed him in the evening, feed him at the supper time. <laughs> and I love him for that. And we're going to cut out everything. Sunday school, Bible class, they're going to cut out everything. Cut, cut, cut out everything. And then wonder how come people uh, uh, are dying, they're dying of starvation. Jesus said, feed. You got children? Well, my children won't do right. Stop fussing at your children. Start feeding them. Start feeding your children. But Pastor, what should I feed them? Give them the word. Psalm 19 said the word of God will make the simple wise. Your simple son can become a wise son if you will feed him the word. Your simple daughter can become a wise daughter if you feed her the word. Your simple husband can become a wise husband if you feed him the word. Well, we share this time with you, and uh, um, I guess I preach about this long at the church, I guess. I don't think, I try to keep things in certain, certain because, you know, uh, Reuben Fields said that, that you can, uh, uh, you got to be careful. You got to be careful when you have uh, people. Uh, he said, when two or three stump show up, he said, whatever. Reverend Phil said, you ought to make sure that the load you have meets the crowd you have. And this season that we're in, people, there's everybody talking all over the place. And people are still busy at home. But I want you to know that if you would eat this word of God, I say, you know, Genesis to Revelation. When I was a child, I acted like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Woman, I put away childish things. So you can begin to do some eating. And then with the pastor's feeding, you'll grow stronger and stronger. How do you know, Pastor? Because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. You know what? He didn't fuss. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He didn't fuss. He didn't fuss. 
He didn't fuss at those that put the nails in his hand, that ripped his feet. He didn't fuss at the thieves who turned on him. He didn't fuss at them. No, no, no. Jesus fed. He fed. He fed. And you know what happened? On that Friday, he died on the cross. He died, yes, he did. He died. They buried him. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And I want you to know, I want you to know that in the midst of this cord, this virus that we're in, I want you to know that we arise and we are rising. And because of this virus, we're able to gather today. More people are seeing, more people are viewing, more people are involved. Listen, the Lord is coming back again just like he said he would. And right now, we need to trust him. It's Mother's Day. If you're blessed that your mother's living, my mother's going on to be with the Lord. I can't call mama. I can't call mama. I wish my sisters happy Mother's Day. I wish Aunt Frances, Aunt Florence, she's listening. Aunt Joyce, others. I thank them, people that's been an influence in my life, and the mothers of the church. I thank God for you. Let's hang in there. Let's trust God, because God got away with promises. He keeps them. Don't forget about giving works, and uh, if you want to give to the ministry, you can. To give it a five, Greater Hope, Buffalo, New York. You see my picture, my wife's picture, picture of the church if you want to give. And give to uh, Cash App, dollar sign, Greater Hope, Buffalo. That works. And um, if you want to bring your gift to the church, you can. The men are here. And uh, thank God for the men of Greater Hope. And here every day from 11 to 12. So if you listen to me, support your church. Support your church. And you'll find out that God has a way but promises he keeps them. If you have a gift for me, you can send it either way, notify it, note it. And it would get to me. And uh, um, mine is dollar sign J, the name Clyde. The letter J is in James, Clyde, 71. Listen, God bless you. God keep you. Remember, God has a way with promises. He keeps them. Have a great day.